All right, everyone. Welcome back to another Trail Talk from the Ridge Runners. I'm your host, Michael Owen, and today I'm happy to introduce Sarah Beal, a local runner here in Ohio, and her story is really compelling because she went from being sort of a mediocre runner in high school to now one of the top in the state. She just recently qualified for the Marathon Olympic Trials with her 244 Marathon at the Columbus Marathon. So we're just gonna talk about her journey. So I hope you enjoy. All right, Sarah. So mm -hmm. thanks for joining us here on the Ridge Runners yeah, thanks Trail for Talk. Having me. I'm excited to hear about your journey. You're a fellow Shawnee State Bear alumni. Um, mm -hmm. Both of us ran there during our college careers. You were after me, but um, it's always good to see SSU alumni doing great things. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just jump right into your running career. Let's just start off with the most recent thing uh, while you're here, and that's qualifying for the Olympic trials in the marathon. Talk about that race and how, uh, you know, what, what your thoughts were coming into that and, and what your thoughts are now after it. Well, uh, going into it, uh, especially that week, I had highs and lows and um, how I was thinking I was going to do. Uh, definitely some runs I didn't feel great. So uh, some days I thought that I was not going to come close to the time at all. And other days, uh, like I did a, a tune-up workout and I felt great during it. So got kind of positive again. So I was really back and forth that whole week. And then uh, throughout the race, um, again, it was a bunch of highs and lows. There were some miles where I felt on top of the world. Um, I think that's just running a marathon in general, uh, though, is that you're going to have that roller coaster of emotions and um, all of those thoughts. So like I said, some miles I thought... Um, I was on top of the world. I definitely could do this. And there were definitely a few miles. Um, I hate to admit, I, I said to myself, I'm never going to be able to run this time ever. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't even know if I'm going to finish. And then you just bounce back another mile. But uh, yeah, it wasn't really until I saw <laughs> the finishing clock that I um, felt confident that I was going to do it unless I fell down or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. Um, and then now... Uh, it's, it's slowly sinking in. Uh, it definitely, right when I finished, um, a lot of different emotions, but uh, it, did, it wasn't sinking in just yet. But now um, it's, uh, it's sunk in a little bit, and uh, I'm just really excited to start training for that, looking forward to that in the, the next year and a half or however long it is. Mm -hmm. So to set the stage for our audience, the Olympic trials qualifying time for women, the B standard is 2.45, two hours, 45 minutes. And it wasn't, you know, you, you didn't beat it by much, um, but you don't need to, you know. <laughs> 25 long, seconds. 20, no, you're, 35 seconds. <laughs> 35 seconds under that qualification time. And, um, you, you know, and that's all it takes, you know, which is amazing, I think, you know, based on this was your second marathon in mm -hmm. your career last year at Columbus you ran 249 and some change. And so really a, a big improvement, uh, I think. Yeah. Like you said, with the marathon, a lot can happen, um, but it's also an experience race where um, generally runners do better with experience. So you know, what, what do you think made the biggest difference from 2017 to 2018 with that five minute improvement? Um, well, the weather <laughs> definitely helped. Um, Last year, the weather was really hot and humid. Uh, also, I think my first marathon, I made just about every first time or mistake possible. Uh, so I think just having that one marathon under my belt, knowing what to expect, um, and the weather was a complete opposite. Mm -hmm. There was a, it was actually a, a tad cold um, for my liking, I guess, uh, but definitely more of uh, the marathon weather than the previous year, mm -hmm. and just actually running a marathon before that and knowing what to expect that's for sure yeah and, and i had the pleasure of being there kind of seeing you run both those races um you know even even without being there i would have tracked it tracked your career being a, a fellow ssu alumni but i had the pleasure of seeing you run both those races kind of up close and personal um in 2017 you were getting paced by our former coach, Eric Putnam. And mm -hmm. you guys were pretty far ahead of me at that in, in that race. And I <laughs> Like felt, I said, first timers <laughs> mistakes, definitely. And so from my perspective, um, I think you really dialed in your pacing. What, how, was, how was your pacing the second time around? And what do you think that, how do you think that played into your result? 
Um, it was my first half was definitely still quicker than the second half. Um, but negative splitting a marathon is probably it's I get really hard. Um, yeah. But uh, there wasn't as many quick miles um, compared to the previous year, and I think um, just my legs felt so much better. Uh, I didn't feel like my legs were going to give out on me out on me um, nearly as much as I did the first year. And I just felt stronger um, yeah. and even more confident. The first year, whenever I saw some of the the mile splits, um, I I freaked out. Like I, I know at mile six, the first year, I I saw what I was running, and I'm like, I had 20 miles left. Like I don't think I can do this. And I had a mini panic attack in the middle of uh, the race. Uh, and I, Eric uh, remembers that pretty well because he was trying to calm me down. Um, with 20 miles to go, I was freaking out. Uh, so this year, kind of seeing more of uh, consistent uh, miles around what um, I had planned on uh, just made me feel better mentally. Like I can actually finish this in a decent time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the marathon is just a scary distance in general, you know, especially I think it's even more of a risk for some of those top level runners like yourself because you are putting that pace out there on the line, um, you know, for you low six minute paces um the whole way out and if you you know get a little fast early on it can really kind of set you back so yeah. seemed like you learned that and you know just from a personal experience uh ironically this year i turned around after i finished the columbus marathon <laughs> and uh, there you were you came in like eight seconds behind me yeah um and so i was super excited that you you know were under your goal and achieved really an amazing accomplishment you know you're Thanks. 20 Four. Four, 24 years old. <laughs> Almost 25. Um, so I, I'd imagine that you're one of the youngest qualifiers, possibly. Um, you know, there's several. Sure. There's a couple years to go before the Olympic trials in 2020, mm -hmm. um, but that's going to be your next biggest race. You obviously have a, yeah. a year and a half um, to train for that and to do other races, but like I would imagine that's your focus from here on out. Definitely. What's what do you see? Uh, kind of what's your plan of attack from? here now, which is November 2018 through uh, Jan uh, February 2020? Um, well, I know this winter and spring I'm going to do a, um, some more quicker ra quicker and shorter races, uh, just kind of put the, the marathon training and that distance um, on the back burner right now. Um, so more of uh, 10Ks and definitely want to try to get in a half marathon or, or maybe uh, the 25K that I ran last year in Michigan, um, around those distances like that. Uh, but definitely still trying to keep my miles up. And then after this, um, this track season and this cycle is over, mm -hmm. then kind of get back in the swing of the marathon training yeah. and those type of workouts and that mileage and long runs and things so like that. Do you, do you think you'll not run another marathon before the trials? Um, I'm not sure. And that's something that um, my coach and I, I guess, haven't really talked about as much because uh, we kind of talked about the um, the track season coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, I wouldn't be uh, disappointed if I didn't run another one. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, if I did, it would be in the early fall, summer. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. That's a that's still up in the air. Yeah, cool. So let's go back a little bit about uh, a little bit in your career, um, kind of to the start of running. Um, you know, you're still young in the whole grand scheme of things of, of a running career. You know, marathoners will be up, you know, even into their 40s and still be competing at a high level for, for that distance. Um, so you're still young, but you, you know, just in 2016, you came off of a college career. You know, four years before that, you came off of a high school running career. So let's take it back to your um, early days of running. When did you get thrown into this crazy sport and, um, how would you assess kind of like the sport for you and kind of like what you got out of the sport or what you wanted from the sport early in your in your career? Uh, well, I didn't get as early of a start as uh, some people. I started track my freshman year of high school. And going into that, um, my, my goal in my running career that first year of ever even racing, um, I wanted to be a sprinter. <laughs> I uh, I ran bas or not ran basketball. I played basketball and I was fast getting up and uh, down the the court. So I thought, oh, okay, I can uh, I can do sprints in um, in track. Well, I think my coaches had other ideas for me, so they kind of put me in the four hundred and the eight hundred, and um, I gradually got uh, 
into the more longer races. But um, I didn't run cross country until my sophomore year. And, uh, and then, I mean, uh, throughout high school, so I ran three years of cross country. And then um, my senior year of high school, I um, going into college, getting ready for that, that whole new life, um, I told myself, by my senior year of uh, college, even if it's on the track, I want to break 19 minutes in the 5K. Mm -hmm. um, and that was my goal. That was my big goal for myself uh, my senior year. And uh, so to my surprise, I did that my sophomore year of, um, of college. Uh, so I kind of had to redirect my goals. And so then I had to keep redirecting them. And um, so it kind of went from there. Yeah. You had a rapid rise. You know, you were a, a solid high school runner based on your times. You, know, you ran 523 in the mile. You ran mid-19 minutes, 1920 in the 5K cross country. Um, but you, you were not a highly sought after recruit. You know, there was no division one schools recruiting you. Um, so, you know, like even like from a personal standpoint, if, if you were at that level, like 19 minutes probably was a really big accomplishment, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, we'll go through this here soon. We'll talk about your, some of your college accomplishments. Um, you know, but you, you, you really climbed up the ladder fast in college um, based on those high school results. Um, what was the um, recruiting process for you? You know, be, you weren't recruited by these high, highly sought after colleges. Um, who, was, who was trying, like, were you just going into college on your own and running or were there some coaches kind of like talking to you to like give you a scholarship? You know, you ended up at Shawnee State with Eric Putnam, um, but like what was that process for you? Um, I got some stuff in the mail uh, for, some of the um, D3 schools uh, in Ohio, things like that. Um, some other random schools that I probably couldn't even uh, tell you the name of that were out of state. Um, again, D3. Uh, and you were from a small town, Beverly, Ohio, yeah. uh, which is not too far from where I live, but you know, very small town to where like there weren't other schools that uh, people were coming to watch meets. Um, no. So you were. Yeah, Division three, which is the smallest uh, division in high school or, or in Ohio high school athletics. Um, so yeah, you just had a lot. Like you just weren't noticed. Um, no, uh, we went to a lot of the smaller races that I talked to my my friends that um, ran in college or that I run with now, and they never ran in those uh, mm -hmm. tiny uh, races. So even with the experience with bigger races in um, in high school, I mean the Ohio State meet was was it. Uh, because I, I won a lot of the tiny um, local races mm -hmm. uh, just because they were very small. Um, but so I knew Jeremy Anderson, who um, also went to Shawnee, and my sophomore year of cross country was his senior year. So it was the first year that I had started cross country and more of the distance running. And um, Eric Putnam came to sign him. And so I kind of met him um, okay. through there. And then with Jeremy's career and Jeremy um, coming back to watch his brothers and everything, I had still kept in contact and talked about Shawnee. So it was kind of um, decided uh, quickly, I guess, yeah. and early on that if I did want to run in, um, in college that I would run for Shawnee. And I thought about the other schools, uh, but they were all small and I just, I didn't know much about their team. I knew that Shawnee had a good team and, and a good coach. And so it was kind of all over from there. It wasn't really a hard decision, I guess. Yeah. And it seems like that's the story with a lot of the athletes that went to Shawnee was mm -hmm. they're kind of like that second tier of, of good runners in high school. They weren't getting letters from the big schools or scholarships at least. Um, but then there was this good NAIA school from Portsmouth, Ohio that had a really cool coach and a really good coach. Yeah. And that so, seems like at least uh, like that was my experience when I joined that team and, and many of my teammates had that same background. Um, so let's, let's take it to, to Shawnee now. Um, so you were an incoming freshman, obviously a, a huge change um, in your life with not only running, but academics, but just general life. And um, what was, like you said, your expectations were to just try to work your way up to break 19 by your senior year. How was that freshman year and when, the, when did you start seeing potential? Well, my freshman year started off, off really rocky. Um, I mean, just being a new freshman anyways, but I... Um, I had hurt my IT bands uh, that summer going into college, and then it kind of got better. And then my other IT band um, hurt me halfway through the season. Uh, so 
and I still ran that season, but uh, it was really rough. Uh, my last race was conference. I didn't make it on the nationals team uh, that year at all. I was, I think I finished second to last on the team. Uh, I ran 23 minutes in, um, in the 5K uh, at conference that year. Um, I was so hurt. I felt terrible, but I still um, kept racing. And so I took a month off after that. And, um, and then I started tra indoor track and that started off rocky too. Uh, that indoor track season, I was really out of shape from taking all of that time off. And um, so that was rough. I wasn't running the times that I thought I should have been or even compared to high school, um, that indoor season. And outdoor season showed a little bit more promise but uh, I remember at one point my freshman year, after a few terrible workouts, uh, I honestly, uh, I thought about quitting. <laughs> I thought that maybe college running isn't for me. Um, and I was hurt and now I'm out of shape. And that's not untypical. I, I don't know how many teammates that I had or that you have had over the course of those four years that they were freshmen. They had some of these you know, ideas of what to do or maybe they were decent and had great plans, but they got hurt, they didn't have the results, and it's hard to want to continue. Yeah. Um, so talk about that. You, you, we talked about it a little bit before. Um, you know, what, you know, you, you thought about um, quitting the team. Um, what, uh, obviously you're, you're here today and you continued, but like what was that process from the end of your freshman year? You know, something had to have changed for you because r pretty much right after that, you kind of got, uh, you know, rapid, rapidly better at running. What was that summer like for you? Well, uh, so like I said, I thought a lot about quitting and then I decided to give it one more shot. I'm like, you know, I might as well try one more time, um, but I'm going to do it right. I'm going to really do this right. Everything that I possibly can to not get hurt and to not finish one of the last on the team. Uh, so that summer, I, uh, as nerdy as it was, I made this poster um, I measured out, the, it took me forever to make this poster. I measured out the lines uh, and I made a couple different ones because I put uh, each, I put all the dates uh, of every day in the summer and I hung it up on my wall in my room and I had uh, like run, core, stretch, hydrate, and just really simple things. But just so it was hung up in my room and I would check it off every day. Um, you know, if I ran that day, which I, I did. I ran every day. I took a day off a week just because I was really afraid of getting hurt again. Um, so I took a day off a week that summer. But other than that, I would check it off, check off when I did core. Did I hydrate good that day? I checked that off. Uh, it's so simple, but something that was hung up in my room that I could see um, all the time and uh, kind of keep me honest. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and I trained hard. I, I also, I stayed in Portsmouth that summer. So I ran with uh, some of my friends and teammates and so that was, that really helped out too. And I think just running in Portsmouth and um, all that it has to offer. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did that that summer. And then there was a 5K race that we did. It was tradition to do um, the Buckeye Run. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it was called when you guys did it too. Yep. Uh, the first week of camp. And I, uh, I actually broke 19. So <laughs> ever since then, I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, that poster worked. Yeah. It had to have worked. <laughs> that's awesome. So... I mean, I think it's just from a college, like any any college runner, like having something like that, having, it's just, it just takes hard work. Um, yeah. You know, I think that's something that Coach Putnam instilled in us was that he made it fun and he showed us what it was like to be an elite level runner, but he also sort of in a, in a non like verbal way just said that like, it just takes hard work. Yeah. And, he, and he was, I think, uh, you know, he was kind of the ringleader for the team um, himself and just like sort of led by example. But yeah. um you know, you definitely took that hard work to the next level, kind of created your own uh, method of, of process of staying honest with yourself. And I think that's what it takes. It, it, you know, I remember Coach Putnam always telling us that the kiss of death for runners is taking two days off in a row because yeah. two days off in a row can become three and become four. It becomes a habit. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right. So you broke your goal. So now what, you know, what's your goal from this point as a sophomore? Um, you know, you can't just stay content with breaking 19. Now, uh, what's, what's the progress now? Um, well, I was really surprised uh, after that. I actually, someone got a picture and I was smiling so big uh, and it says the time on it too. And that might be one of my favorite pictures 
um, out of all my running career because that's kind of where everything took off, mm-hmm. um, that moment right there, and it was captured. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so um, I set some some high goals. I wanted to be an, an All American after that uh, after that race. I decided that you know I can make that a goal now, mm-hmm. and so I had to go back to the drawing board, I guess, and. And uh, redirect my goals from that uh, senior year in high school where I'm like, I wanted to break 19 because I did that. So it was time to to make new goals. And I guess not, I didn't have a a time goal necessarily, Um, more of, okay, I wanna be an All American. Competition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wanna be competitive. I I wanna be the best that I can be and I wanna be an All American. Yeah. So. So Shawnee State is an NAIA school, so you're competing against other NAIA schools. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's been a fairly competitive division. Um, All-American in cross country is top 30 in track season for whatever distance or for whatever event you're doing, it's what, top eight? Yeah. Um, And so you had your whole sophomore year, your whole junior year for both uh, cross country and track. Um, And and I just want to read off your accomplishments here from here because I, I think it's just fitting to kind of put it all in perspective. You're a five-time All-American. Um, you're All-American in cross-country one year and your junior and senior year you're an All-American in the 5k and a 10k both of those years which is which is crazy that you were able to to do that on the same weekend the, the 10k. <laughs> yeah the 10k being before the 5k on different days but still you had to run at a high level on two different events. Um, you know so Five-time All-American, you got your cross-country PR down to 1738 in college, mm-hmm. and on the track you got it down to 1709, which, when you when you compare that to your initial goal of 19 minutes, yeah. is almost literally two minutes faster, um, which is like 40 seconds per mile, um, which is crazy. And then just looking back at your, you know, your high school times, um, your improvement, you know, you, all of a sudden you go from just kind of a you know, decent high school runner to one of the best in the state, not just for NAIA, but the whole state of Ohio. Um, to, I mean, what, what good, like, what do you think about that? Like, what, what do you attribute that to? You know, had, you know, I don't think it's just a fluke that you got better all of a sudden, you know, besides hard work, um, is there a person that you attribute to being a huge influence on your life? Or is it just some things that you found that clicked for yourself? Um, you know, what, what, what do you think led to that success? Um, I, I have Eric uh, to thank a lot for that. Uh, that's the first person I think that comes to mind, um, especially that, that jump um, after high school to college. Uh, because, I mean, my freshman year, I feel like a lot of people, um, and a, a lot of coaches, you know, see that a runner that comes in uh, second to last, I think, on the team um, at conference. Even though I was hurt, but still I came in second to last and – I ran 23 something. And even in track, I, I wasn't running that great uh, that season. But I feel like most people would just kind of push me to the side and um, still let me be on the team, but not really uh, talk me up and give me any confidence. But uh, he didn't give up on me. Um, he saw the potential um, that I had, which was awesome. Uh, I can't thank him enough for that because that's one of the reasons why I didn't quit because I knew that he had saw a lot in me, so I decided to give it another chance. And uh, just, I mean, all of the coaching and everything, uh, he's definitely the, one of the first people that come to mind, and, and also uh, the teammates. And a little bit of uh, Portsmouth, too. Yeah. I feel like uh, training in Portsmouth, um, I don't know if there's a little bit of magic to it, but uh, <laughs> Portsmouth, I think. <laughs> Portsmouth uh, formed me into this runner, uh, as kinda, crazy as that sounds. It kind of seems like the... The runners that had who have had a lot of success, some of the All Americans from Shawnee, I, I feel like we all have this very similar trait, and just like grit might be the word, or just like a sort of a chip on our shoulder. But yeah. you know, Portsmouth is a rough town sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and it just you know when you're out on a on a normal run, it sort of requires a little bit of toughness. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> talk about. I mean, <laughs> we might get a little off topic here, but you've had some crazy things happen to you while running in Portsmouth. Give yeah. us a couple stories. Uh, These are good. Okay. Well, um, I my favorite one uh, is my freshman year. It was uh, that track season. And feel free to use language if, if it requires. <laughs> language. Okay. Well, um, maybe <laughs> I might have to. Uh, so. We were running, and we had probably like 400 meters left to go of a run, and it was me and uh, Andy and Andrea, and we were all just chatting, and um, 
the sidewalks in Portsmouth are absolutely terrible. I, all of the scars on my knees are um, tribute to the Portsmouth uh, sidewalks. Well, uh, there was a really big um, just crater that I didn't pay attention to because I was chatting away. And I tripped, I fell, I busted my knee open. And I, as I'm laying there in pain and my friends are trying to help me, uh, a townie, um, which I don't know how to describe a townie to people that really don't know townies. It's pretty good description itself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, comes, uh, pulls up and it's this bigger lady. Um, and she's wearing like blue eyeshadow. I mean, she's the townie to the core and she's pulls up in a rusty pickup truck and she's like, honey, I saw what happened. Are you okay? Before I could say anything, she gets out of her truck, scoops me up in her arms like a baby <laughs> and puts me in the bed of her pickup truck. And I'm like, well, I, I guess this is what I'm doing today. <laughs> and she's like, where do you guys need to go? She's like, hop on in. And then she lights up a cigarette. And as my friend uh, Andy is trying to tell uh, her which way to go to take us back to the school, she opens up that little window in the back of the uh, the truck and she's blowing smoke in her face. And she's like, this is my good deed for the day. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, she's just driving like crazy um, through the parking lot. And at one point, I just started laughing. Like, I was in pain. Well, that's a positive story. I, yeah, thought, I, mean, it I is. thought you were going to share one of your negative oh, stories. Oh, well, okay. I mean, I had to get stitches that day. So I guess there was that. Um, and then I had a track race, like, uh, three days later. But that was, a, I guess, more of a funny story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the first one that comes to mind when thinking of running in Portsmouth. Um, oh, my gosh. I, the the bat... I, the bad stories, I mean, there's townies all the time that come and say different things, uh, but I guess we always just got humor out of it. So, um, but definitely uh, some the typical cat calls um, mm -hmm. and things like that. Uh, some sketchy um, back roads. I know when we uh, did Creek Bed, there was always that one house that um, yep. yeah, they had their flags, I guess. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, but weren't you like punched or? cursed out by a little girl one time was that somebody else did i get or I, snowball was it oh i did get uh, that's yeah. what i thought yeah i uh, forgot about that <laughs> um yeah i was running by myself i think and it was a boy actually it wasn't a little girl it was a middle school boy he threw a snowball at me <laughs> and um said some like really bad language that a middle school boy shouldn't say. And I'm pretty sure at that point in time, my first reaction was to say something really bad back <laughs> and run away really quick. And that's sort so. of what you have to do in Portland. You have to fend for yourself. You can't, you oh, can't be you, nice back to It's instinct at that point. Uh, you just kind of, yeah, you have to fend for yourself we could have to a survive. Whole, you know, if we get all the Shawnee alumni here, we're going to have a whole episode on, <laughs> on uh, just stories stories from running the, the zigzag loop in Portsmouth. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's get back to, to talking about your running career. Um, so all your All-Americans, we'll just sort of um, jump past that because you continued your running career. You're now you know, over two years after graduating from Shawnee um, with all those accomplishments. Um, and then you, you continued running post-collegiately. And currently you're on the Columbus Running Company elite team. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, we just talked about this earlier, but you qualify for the Olympic trials. Um, talk about some of the, the lead up to that. You, you know, your first marathon, we, we talked about that, was 249. That was last year in 2017. But you also had some great um, results at some USATF championships. Mm -hmm. You were top 20, um, I believe, at the half marathon championships in 2017. And then, you, then this past year, uh, earlier in the year, you were 10th place in the USATF. Oh. 11th place um, in the 25K National Championship. And that's those are races, you know, Columbus, you were fourth place, you were third place last year, but these USATF National Championships are generally bringing in a elite crowd from across the country. You're running against names like Sarah Hall and yeah. other names that are recognizable, you know, for, for any runner, um, you know, elite sponsored, maybe even like Olympic caliber runners. So what has it been like, you know, Moving from like running against NAIA runners to now running against these girls, these ladies that have household, you know, it's like a household name for runners. You know, what's it like running against these mentors or idols? Uh, intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely intimidating. Uh, but it's honestly, it's really cool though. Uh, just to line up and to say that I was lining up even in the same area. Uh, as some of the people that I follow on social media and I look up to a lot. I know uh, I warmed up for the 25K and uh, I passed Emma Bates, 
who I followed uh, her career and she runs for Adidas now. And I passed her and I'm just like trying not to fangirl. And I'm pretty sure my face was just this like crazy wild smile and I probably freaked her out. But um, it's I'm trying to, it's been, um, I guess, different to, to try not to fangirl because there are people too, they're warming up for their race um, as well. Uh, but so I've tried to keep it cool, uh, but it's, it's awesome and, and intimidating. I know that, um, my coach now, um, Christina, who also won, uh, the mm. Columbus marathon, uh, she wants me, um, to do a lot more of those USATF races and to get more experience with mm. that and, uh, to be able to run against those top people and kind of find my place in that mix. Yeah. I mean, to, to you now at this current age, you look up to these ladies, but you know, if your trajectory keeps going like it is, now there's a whole group of college girls, high school girls that are looking up to you. Um, you know, what's, have you thought about that much? Um, you know, you're no longer the, the newbie at this point. You're two years into your post-collegiate career and you, you have a resume now on, you know, maybe, maybe not the national scale, but you know, every right you do. Um, definitely the regional scale, you know, I would say finishing top four in the Columbus Marathon two years in a row puts you in that top class of Ohio runners. Um, you know, what, what's it, what do you think your role is in the greater sense of running with, with now you being the person that people look up to? Um, I guess I haven't thought about it as much uh, because it's kind of, it's new to me, I guess. Um, but I just, I really want people to see like where I was mainly in high school, like where I was in high school and that's kind of the sky's the limit. Like yeah. you don't just um, put a number on it and stick to that uh, because I was that average runner in high school mm -hmm. that uh, I think a, a lot of girls just see themselves as maybe running in college, maybe not. And there's that decision to make. And I really want people, more than anything, I want those people that are on the fence about it that were running the times or are running the times that I am to go for it because there's so much, there's so many possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, so just to kind of uh, stay positive and just reach for the stars, I guess. Yeah, and you're a perfect example of that sort of, not rags the riches, but... I mean, but yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> being being uh, someone that no one looks at as uh, to now being through lots of years of hard work, you know, eight years or more of hard work, now being able to say that you went from that point of your career to now being, you know, at, at the point that you are, um, you know, and, and you are young, like, like we've talked about, there's so many women in their thirties, even forties that are still competing at that high level. So that, that might mean 15 years or more. What do you see your future in the running world being? What's your goals, I guess, from now? Um, well, my main goal like goal is to see how many trials I can qualify for and how far I can push myself. Um, and I just want to keep PRing in the, uh, the marathon. I don't, I guess I'm still new to the marathon too. I've only done two. So I don't um, ever want to put a certain number on uh, a PR, but I definitely want to keep PRing and I want to just ride this out for as long as I can go. I want to be one of the older ones at the trials. Yeah. Um, whenever uh, it gets to that point. But uh, yeah, just to, to keep qualifying and, and keep running in uh, these bigger races and to see how good I can um, place and just to uh, keep trying to PR in all of the, the races that I do. Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, the sky's the limit for you. You know, with you being so young, I really do think that, you know, once you get more and more experience, like it's just so much more beneficial as a marathon runner, you yeah. know, 5K, you can still sort of like ride ride the young speed uh, freshness of it, but uh, marathon is definitely an experienced veteran runners event, um, and you're already to that point. So um, awesome. We'll wrap it up here soon, but um, I always be in a trail running platform with Ridge Runners and Ultra Marathon running. Um, you never. I have talked to you about this off air plenty of times, but uh, you've never completely ruled out ultra marathons. Oh gosh! So, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, just kind of a, to end it off, like, is with ultra marathon running being more prevalent in the running scene? You know, marathons used to be sort of the end goal for runners. Yeah, yeah. Um, now we're starting to see a little bit more opportunities for elite runners to be able to 
not make not necessarily make a living or make a career, but maybe make a running career out of it. Um, yeah. Is ultra marathon running something that you would consider or <laughs> have your eyes on? Um, I don't know, uh, and we've talked about this. Um, it, I mean, it would be fun to try a race and just to to say that I've tried it um, after the trials, uh, but. I really like the marathon and the half and everything, um, but I, I won't rule out that I won't try one. I guess. Okay, well, I'll hold it to hold it yeah, to I that. Know. <laughs> um, several years down the road, you got yeah. plenty of time. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, hey, thanks for joining us, Sarah. Yeah, thanks and, for having uh, me. Welcome, uh, or if you <laughs> want to view the past episodes, we're Ridge Runners on YouTube. You can also find us on podcast form, Apple iTunes, and Google Play. And as always, you can drop us a line on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Um, have a good one, guys. Happy trails. Mm-hmm.